I'm not white enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not important. I'm irrelevant. It's only meant for whites. I should probably go back to where I belong. These are words that I have been telling myself my entire life. And these are words that I believed every second of my life. As an Asian female born and raised in a Western country, life has been a struggle. From the instant I was born into this world, I haven't lived a moment free of oppression and discrimination. Every day, I walk down the same street to go home, to school, to hang out with friends, or just simply for a walk. And every time, I get the same dirty look from people passing by. Some move away. Others whisper things to their friends. And the braver ones yell racial slurs. It can be that they've never seen an Asian with pink hair, but I'm pretty positive that my race is the origin of their discomfort. I can't really do anything if they have a problem with me, can I? But I would like that problem that they have with me to become a problem for everyone. It sounds like narcissism at its finest, but it's actually a much bigger issue. It does not regard just me. It regards every single individual on this earth. Each and every one of you in this room. We live in a society where an oppressive system is present. And it's been dominating our consciousness for centuries and centuries. It's not simply racial oppression. We are talking about a whole oppressive hierarchical system that humans have created since the ancient past. It's an unjust system where the majority group, the oppressors, are privileged and benefit from every aspect of society. While the minority, the oppressed, face all kinds of inequity in the same society. I started understanding the concept of racism and oppression back in kindergarten when I was only four years old, and I felt someone's hatred towards me for the first time. Hatred towards a child, an innocent, naive child. What possibly could a child have ever done wrong? But the factor that horrified me the most is that that someone was my own teacher. I kept the harsh hatred inside me as it left an open wound on my mind. Growing up, life didn't get any easier. The wound was still open, and pretty soon it got infected, infected with false beliefs. I started believing what society was telling me, that white people are superior, white people are better, white people are the social paragon, and obviously everyone else is inferior. These beliefs made me want to be as white as I could become. So what did I do? I started acting like my Italian friends, dressing like them, talking like them, or even eating like them. At the same time, I started neglecting my Chinese origin, ignoring all the racism towards me and counterbalancing it by being racist towards other people. I was living in a stranger's body. But pretty soon, I was finally being accepted by Italians. I was happy. Or at least I thought that I was. Because I thought that my wound had completely healed. But little did I know that I was internalizing the actual system that was oppressing me. After a few years, my wound started to hurt. It was hurting not for that one memory from kindergarten, but because it became a massive wound from the accumulation of racial hatred that I had neglected over the years. It was more than infected, and I could not ignore it any longer. I decided that I had to bring some changes into my life, bring real happiness in me. In order to overcome my internalization, I started unwinding the false image that I had created by rediscovering myself, embracing my Chinese origin. 
and overcoming the oppression. I surrounded myself with people that could accept me, respect me for who I was. I could finally be myself. My wounds slowly started to heal, and it turned into the scar that marks my mind, but that I show with pride. Today, my identity is shaped by both Italian and Chinese cultures, and I have no shame in showing it. Racial internalization is a very serious issue, and I am not the only one who faced it. But if I was able to break through the inter internalization illusion, so can you. Don't be ashamed of your nationality or race. Don't neglect your internalization. Don't ignore the oppression. Embrace them all. Be proud of your identity. Overcome the internalization. Fight the oppression. If you take a look at our history, we realize that we have endured so much pain, so much agony in the hands of our oppressors, and that we have come so far from that oppression. We have abolished slavery. We have defeated Nazism. We have ended segregation. We have marched for our rights. We have stood up for our own voice. Certainly, we are living the most progressive era of the history of humankind. But are we really not going to acknowledge that there's still so much injustice and discrimination happening around us? Are you really just going to sit there and ignore what's in front of your eyes? Disregard the sound of hatred in your ears. Every second that we blink our eyes, someone in the world is being bullied, abused, persecuted, or even killed for their race, ethnicity, skin color, nationality. By taking a look at statistics that show the rate of death and incarceration at the hands of the police, they suggest that more than white people have been killed and wrongfully convicted by the police than white people. And yet, we are talking about a country that's predominantly white. The numbers are alarming. They are telling us that something is wrong, very wrong. This oppressive system has been established in our society for so long that it has created strong racial biases that rest in our minds. Biases so heavy that lead people to kill other people driven by the fear of the other's race. Is this really the world we want to live in? in which you want to live in, together we can create a society where we all live in harmony. We can develop a system where there's no hierarchy, discrimination, oppression or bias. We can learn to treat every human being equally. But changes need to happen. We need to put an end to our oppressive system today. Not tomorrow, not later, but today. You might be wondering, how can I, an individual without any position of power, put an end to a system that's persisted for centuries? Well, as Paolo Freire once said, that something that's a firm dialogue counter women and men in order to transform the world is naively idealistic. There is nothing, however, more real and concrete than people in the world and with the world and humans with other humans. Therefore, everyone, every single one of you can contribute in the fight against oppression. Even you, the oppressor. Together, we can piece by piece deconstruct what was once built and make our own ideal reality. So why don't you start by acknowledging your privilege? In order to understand oppression in other people's lives, it is important to recognize ways in which you are not oppressed. Be grateful for having the benefit of being immune to the oppression in your society. Be grateful for never having to feel the true colors in your society. Be grateful for the hatred you don't have to deal with within your society. And use your privilege. The voice 
the representation that life has considered you to give a voice to those who don't. From today, as we start deconstructing what was once built, let's start building a bridge that brings fruitful discussion, a bridge that obliterates hatred and division, a bridge that unites every single human being. Thank you.